Good morning and welcome, and thank you for those of you who've remained. And there are some seats down the front, ladies, if you want to come and join us down the front. So, for those of you who don't know, my name is Mrs. Clark. I'm one of the vice principals in the senior school and the diploma coordinator. So, as you move into grade 10, I'm going to be working a lot more closely with you and in understanding the senior school and moving forward into the diploma program in grades 11 and 12. But what we wanted to do this morning is get you together as a great, so welcome back from Eastern Canada as well. It sounds like some of you are still recovering from all the, the colds and the blues and what you got. Oh yeah, let's hear it all. <laughs> <laughs> so, you will notice that we've got a lot of teachers who are coming to speak to you this morning. So we're going to go through a little bit about what grade 10 is, the grade, the programs, the options, because you will not be having electives next year, as you've had the, the sorry, you won't be having the leaps next year, but you will be taking some electives. We want to discuss as well to the differences in the language choices, how the math map, uh, maps forward through the grade, um, through the grade 10 and into the diploma program. Um, Mr. Corkell is down to talk to you a little bit about the introduction of the personal project. And we will also talk about planning 10 and how you have to complete that as well. So when you move into the grade 10 program, as I mentioned, you will not be doing LEAP electives, but you'll be following a core program of MYP courses. So you'd be, everybody will be doing English 10, social studies, um, science 10, math and physical education and then you get choices with the languages and you will get a choice with the math as well. So I am actually going to hand over to the teachers as the arts teachers were here first I'm going to hand over to them first to speak about the art selectives that you will have next year. Sorry languages you're going to have to wait. We need to speak in here so it's been Okay. Uh, I am the film teacher, so just a little bit about film. Uh, in grade 10, it is a production-heavy course, so we do do film history and theory, but mostly in grade 11 and 12, so it is production, it's making movies, uh, it's learning how to work the camera, it's learning the software. It's also a really good introduction for grade 11 and 12, so if you already know, or you have an older sibling who took it, and you're thinking, oh, that might be an option, uh, it's a great option uh, to take in grade 10, because it preps you for the grade 11 and 12 course. That's it. Okay, well, you, you all know me, um, but what you don't, may not know about is the Music 10 course that I teach that's kind of my baby here. So, um, performing arts, we know about that. Music 10 extends on all the musical skills that we learned in performing arts 7, 8, and 9, and it focuses around um, both your performance ability as a soloist and a group player. Composition is a new thing that we add in, so we do quite a bit of composing, as well as elements of music theory, but I make it fun, I promise. Um, but the main goals for the year are getting you performing at a level that you would like to feel capable of. Regardless of your beginning level, you can come in and you can do whatever you need to. Um, so you pick repertoire that's appropriate to you. So if you feel like you aren't the strongest performer, you can take any level of music that you're working with and work with it in this course. Um, most of the projects are composition and theory based um, with the goal of preparing you for um, if you go on and take the DP music class that we have now. So if you want to go onwards towards a DP music class, I highly recommend taking my course. It'll prepare you for it. If you aren't planning on taking DP music, but you still want to take music as an elective, it's a great option because it's a lot of fun. Okay. Hello, everyone. I've seen you around the art room, I think. I'm Ms. Giesbrecht, and I teach the visual arts portion of the electives. And so grade 10, we have a lot of fun. We start to, again, prepare for the DP in terms of opening up your options a little more, so you have a little more choice. Uh, you play around a little bit more with ideas. You also really work around those creative behaviors. So how can you come up with your own ideas? What's important enough to you to want to make a statement about, and which kind of materials could you best do that? So we work with a lot of skills and techniques, but we also have a lot of fun in terms of your own expression and what you want to communicate in visual arts. So I guess <coughs> thinking about uh, DP visual arts, you definitely want to take visual arts, even if you're not. Um, it's a lot of fun. I often keep in mind that for some of you, this will be your last 
time maybe taking visual arts. Hopefully not for, definitely not for all of you, but for some of you it will be. So we have a lot of um, fun with things like installation art and kind of preparing you so that when you go out into the world, you go into art galleries, you kind of can talk um, intelligently about the art that you're seeing, as well as we really want you to have a great positive experience in your grade 10 years, so you can leave feeling like, even if you don't do art in DP, again, although a lot of you hopefully will, um, but those of you who don't, you might pick it up again later in life. So I really want you to leave with just an amazing grade 10 experience in your life. I'm just going to speak briefly about the ACE course, which is a critical thinking, creative thinking course where uh, you will engage with a variety of text types from poetry to novels to short stories to, to film and various forms of multimedia. Uh, you'll have a whole range of activities uh, from debate, um, mock trial perhaps, um, creative writing, a whole uh, range of activities in the ACE course. And uh, one of the things that I think is... is really fantastic about it is you will have some say in the direction of the course. If you and your cohort in that class are really keen on exploring debate, then there is flexi flexibility within the nature of the course. The teacher can guide you in that direction. It's, it's a lot of fun and uh, Ms. Ferrer is the teacher. So the last elective that's on there is theatre and Ms. Race um, runs a theatre program. So that extends on the work that you've been doing in your performing arts um, over the last three years, but really focuses on the theatre piece. As a grade 10 student, you are going to be selecting two electives. And you're going to be doing these electives for a whole year. So it's not semestered, you do these um, electives for the whole year. Now there are occasionally students due to high level extracurriculum activities that they do, can request to do a personal elective. That has to be approved by either the principal or one of the vice principals, so either Mr. Davis or myself or Ms. Douglas in the senior school. You have to have special permission to do that. If you take a personal elective and it is approved, then you cannot take ACE. You have to do film, music, theater, or visual art as one of your electives. Any questions to the um, electives teachers? I also have some notes from Ms. Reese. Okay. Sorry, I was not sure she was going to show no. up, but yeah. <laughs> I can say a couple of things about theater as well. Um, sorry, I wasn't sure if she was going to be able to show up, but um, she has mentioned that you're going to look at the language of drama, production elements, genres and styles, process and structuring of the actual making of drama, writing and script writing, character understanding. Uh, so you design, create, collaborate, review, and reflect and motivate students to develop curiosity within theater and also explore and challenge your boundaries within theater. So a lot of fun with Ms. Reese. Any questions about the personal electives? Yes. Do we use marks in this course? Or? Yes, you get NYP scores. Um, so you're using the, the rubrics as you would do in the NYP for all these classes. Any other questions? Yes? If you take a personal elective, are you still allowed to take another, uh, like one other elective? You, yeah, so if you do a personal elective, you have to do one of these. The only one you can't do is ACE, because it doesn't meet the NYP requirements. Yes. Would that mean if you take a personal elective, you have one less mark than everybody else? Yes. But you have to have permission to do it. Yes? Uh, does that mean that ACE course doesn't no, it does give you NYP marks, but in Ms. Maud, do you want to explain a little bit more? It just doesn't, the other courses lead into uh, DP courses, so they give you a foundation for those courses. ACE is more of a creative writing style, as Mr. Cockell explained, so it's still an elective you would get a level four, but it doesn't uh, build on from NYP into DP, so that's why you can't do it with a personal elective. But you could take film in ACE, you just can't take personal elective <coughs> All right, so we have our two wonderful ladies from the language department. We've got Madam Sofa and Miss Chen. We're going to tell you a little bit about the options for your language selection. Okay, hello, so I'm Madam Sofa and I do French. Um, and I'll talk to you more about the language B options. <coughs> and Miss Chen will then talk to you about the language A option with Mandarin and also answer any questions about language B option with Mandarin. 
Um, so you're all currently taking some kind of language, and the intent of the, of the NYP is that you end the NYP program at, at grade 10 with a pretty good grounding in a language that will allow you to use it in life or will provide you with the grounding necessary to go on in the DP program. Um, what, we have several different options in language that will either allow you to continue the language studies or, in some cases, um, give you other options. So we have for language B, depending on what you've been studying, how many people in French right now? And how many people in Mandarin language B? Yeah, okay, great. So if you are already currently in the language B program, you most likely would continue with it in grade 10. Um, you have two levels in the grade 10 French and Mandarin program, the, French, the, the, the standard level and the extended level, which corresponds more or less to the phase in which you are. The standard phase would be more like a 3-4, mm -hmm. and the extended phase would start off with a 4, um, and would uh, be a more rigorous program, would prepare you more for, um, completely for a smooth transition to the DP program, but the other level would as well. Um, the French TAN and the Mandarin TAN programs are designed to really prepare students to be able to um, go into the DP program with a good language of, le of uh, language skills as well as an understanding of the criteria and the um, requirements in the DP program. If for some reason you don't feel that you want to continue with your current language choice, we have another option, however, for grades 10, 11, and 12, which you can transition into either in grade 10 or in grade 11, and that is Introductory Spanish, which is uh, uh, taught by Ms. Chi, and it takes p beginners um, through an accelerated program um, to a level that would allow them, again, to do the ab initio, the beginning level Spanish course in the DP program. So there's just lots of different levels and choices in Language B, and after Ms. Chen describes in a bit more detail, um, <coughs> the Language A program will take your questions. For Chinese uh, A uh, language and literature, it's mainly designed for the uh, for native speakers who has a prior uh, prior education, prior uh, formal education of a language A. So if you are grade now in grade nine, you're taking Mandarin A class, a uh, Chinese A class, then you are is eligible to go to the grade ten Chinese A language. Uh, but if you are not taking the uh, uh, Chinese A um, now. So then you have to talk to either either uh, Miss Lee in the middle school, either come to either talk to me. Then we need to do some assessment to determine you are eligible to get on. Because this course will lead to the uh, lead to DP uh, Chinese language uh, A land list, and then will um, let you to have a p opportunity to get the uh, bilingual diploma. So if you have any question about the languages. <coughs> Is it the same with as M NYP where if you do extend it, you get an extra point? Is there an extra point for the um, role? We, we haven't done, but it's um, it's something that we are looking into. Basically, well, since since NYP now has phases for languages, it didn't used to. The higher phase prepares you for the DP. Since NYP now has uh, phases and, and it didn't used to, the higher phase, if you're appropriately placed in the higher phase, that will prepare you more. Um, you'll be at a higher level, to, uh, which will enable you to transition to the DP program more smoothly. So it's an advantage in that case, and we can look into the whole idea of, of points. I don't know um, what we'll do with that at this point. There was another question in the back, I think. Somebody? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, thanks. So, oh, yes? yes? Is there introductory French? <laughs> there is not introductory French. We spread a little thin. We spread a little thin with our staffing and, the, and our offering. So what we did was we offered introductory Spanish. If someone comes in and they haven't had much of a background in French, um, that would be their option. It's sort of our, our option for people who transition in or who, for some reason, want to change their language. Yeah? Is it better to do, like, if you're in extended French and you want to, like, do extended French, like, in the DP, is that better than doing Spanish introductory? Or are they, like, if you want to do French in the DP, I wouldn't transition into Spanish. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it really, it's a, it's a personal, you have to ask yourself what you really want and what's working for you. Um, I could argue both ends, but I will say that if you've invested time in the language now, you might want to consider the benefits that you get from continuing to develop your skills in that language. You can always take other languages later, 
um, but um, you would come out of high school, a language B diploma, even standard level, presupposes that you have pretty solid skills. Um, the Spanish is a really good option if you really want to explore another language. You won't come out of it with the same, the same level um, that you would if you were to continue to develop your skills in the language you've started with. But it's, it's a question of what you want. Yeah. So, yeah, some students like to just try a new language because yeah. they want to pick up a third language. Some students have had enough of French and Mandarin and they just want to start want something new. new. Mm -hmm. So it really does, it really does it really vary. depends on what you want. Yeah. I had a question here, then one in the back. It's only possible to take one language B. Uh, yes. For, in grade 10, yes. Question in the back? No. Question in the front? Can you get a minimal <coughs> diploma if you speak fluently Spanish? There's options at the diploma level. You can't do beginning Spanish. No. But you, there are options if you have another mother tongue. If you're fluent in another language and have had some informal training so you can read and write in it as well, you could as well do a language A option, a second language A, and say Spanish for you, um, and get a bilingual diploma. However, it would be largely self-study. You'd be working um, with a teacher who would help you, um, guide you through the um, assessments that you'd have to do for the language A, second language A, but it would be more self-study. And you will not be able to do French? You could, depending on your, <coughs> French is French A, French is a native language? No, French. But I don't know if I French. We, we will come more into um, the other languages next year. It gets quite complicated it in does. terms of the options. It does. <coughs> but if you want to come and talk about it any time, drop by. Yeah? So, I'm in Mandarin right now, but I know some French. Uh -huh. Is there a test I could take to see if I know it on French with the uh, French? Test? Yes, you should. Yeah, you should come and talk to us for sure, and we could do something like that. The so thing I've is, got Madame Sofa, um, Miss Chi. Probably yeah. Madame Sofa is your best, best yeah. lady to come and see. It's kind of nice to be, think, be thinking a little bit about, well, quite a bit at this point, about what you want to do in the DP level or what you want to do for the next couple of years because language is so, uh, you have to build on the foundation and it's slow acquisition. So switching in the middle um, is something you want to avoid. You've got to get, set yourself a course and go for it. Okay, we're, we're running out of time, so I'm going to push through, um, <coughs> and we're going to hand over to our mathematicians. Mr. Reekin has deserted Mr. Pryor. Mr. Reekin's at, Mr. Reekin is at the back because you guys have all, all know him, but you probably don't know me. Uh, so we we're, we're both going to say the same thing. So and we both teach. Uh, well, he teaches a grade nine. So first of all, just to make it clear, there's no there's no choice in math in grade ten. There's pathways. So the pathways that you have now. If you're in 9 standard, then you'd be moving into 10 standard. And if you're in 9 extended, you'd be moving into 10 extended. I teach math 10 extended. Um, and basically, these are, uh, are courses that uh, prepare you for uh, both. There's three <coughs> courses in the diploma program in math. Uh, studies, which is a standard level course, math standard level, and math higher level. If you're in math extended, you're moving towards that higher level uh, pathway, but you could still move into the standard level pathway. And then in the uh, math 10 standard, you will be writing the, the provincial math um, uh, provincial exam for BC, and you are on the pathway in the diploma to move either into studies or into math uh, standard level. And a good thing to look at now that I'd like to mention is um, if you're looking at how you're doing in math right now, it gets a little bit rigorous. As we get into grade 10 and obviously into grade 11 and 12, you know, the rigor increases. So, you know, in the MYP, we have lots of different criteria, but as we focus into the senior school and into DP, uh, it, it focuses on that, that A criteria. So really take a look at your A criteria, you know, coming into the end of this year. And if you need to do any touch-up, you know, work, you know, it, it might be a, a, a good bet to do a little bit of summer work in math if you're, if you're looking at, uh, you know, doing really well in these, in these courses. Um, uh, yeah? Any questions any for Mr. Any questions Pryor? about math? Okay, that's good. Um, so I'm going to move you on to... And the personal project of Mr. McCorkell, and then I'll come back to a few other pieces. Sure. So, uh, in all the uh, IB programs, so the 
uh, primary years program, middle years program, and um, diploma program, they have culminating projects. So in the primary years program, it was the exhibition. In the middle years program, it's the personal project. And then when you move into the diploma, it's the extended essay. What the personal project is, is it's an opportunity for you to really pursue any interest or <coughs> passions that you have. Um, there's really three components to the personal project. One is uh, your process journal, where you'll be recording all of the work that you're doing, the research and steps that you're working towards completing your product. Uh, that product can range from, it could be service-based, it could be arts-based, um, it could be uh, research-based, really it, it's only up to your imagination and your, your interest level for focusing in on what that product will look like. So you've got the uh, process journal, which records all the work that you're doing, you've got the product itself, and then you've got the uh, project report, which is a paper which summarizes the steps that you went through to complete the personal project. Um, what we'll be doing this year, uh, later in June, late May or June, uh, we'll be introducing the personal project to you in, in more detail, and we're going to be having some workshops together uh, with the hopes that you will be able to focus in on, on what your project is going to be on, so that if you need to work on it over the summer, or if, uh, if it's going to require a lot of work, then you, you have an opportunity to work on it over the summer. And then when you come back in grade 10, uh, in September, we'll, we'll line you up with a supervisor who will help guide you through the entire process. Um, right now, the current grade 10s are just wrapping up their uh, personal project experience. So they've submitted their project report uh, papers, and their supervisors are going through the process of marking those. Uh, next week, uh, Tuesday, is the celebration of learning. So if you, uh, some of you went through it last year, I, I recognize some faces with older brothers and sisters in, in grade 11 now, but we strongly encourage the grade nines to come to the celebration of learning. It'll give you an opportunity to see the range of uh, projects that are out there and ask the students uh, any questions about uh, the process that they went through to, to complete their personal project. Any questions? Perfect. Okay, so the last piece of the puzzle moving forward into grade 10 is for you to do planning 10. And this is a compulsory requirement from the BC um, government that, we, that you have to do um, planning 10 um, for graduation. So there are a few options in terms of it's a planning 10 course, looks at um, a wide variety of things that are relevant to you as a grade 10 student moving forward into looking at being able to do some finance work, being able to research careers, look at universities, write CVs. There's all sorts of different practical things that are covered in the course. And you need to think about how you want to complete planning 10. So there's a few options. We actually have been offering it for a summer program at Mulgrave for the last few years. This is a four week program. It's very interactive, in a classroom, hands-on, discussions, um, makes it really enjoyable experience to work with some of your friends and to complete Planning 10 in summer school. Another option is to do it online during the summer. So if you want to find out what it's like to do an online course, this is a really good time to experience doing online learning when you might not have had that opportunity before. And it's quite straightforward. Um, there is another option of doing it through grade 10 online as well. We don't recommend the last option. And that basically, because you're going to be, uh, Mr. Price already said the work is going to be stepping up in grade 10 for mathematics, you've got the personal project going on, it really does make a difference moving from grade 9 to 10. So if you can remove one of the stresses from your grade 10 year, that will make it a lot easier. So if you can do planning 10 during the summer, as an online course or as a summer school program that will take one piece of the puzzle out of grade 10 and make life more um, easier. Um, we have, a, uh, Ms. Douglas has just arrived at the back, so one of the um, vice principals of the senior school. Ms. Douglas, was there anything I just missed out of planning 10? No, fabulous, fabulous. Hi everyone, sorry I'm late, I was at the grade 11. Um, but just a warm welcome again to the senior school. If you have any questions, about your course selection or planning 10, I am going to send you a link to a Google form.
platforms where you're going to indicate which of these three options you'd like to do. And then you're going to go to the middle school office or the senior school office and pick up your registration form. So the next week there's going to be a few things that you're going to have to take care of with um, after talking to your parents tonight. Okay? A few questions. Yes. Um, are there any extra costs um, the yes. summer school program, yes. yes. Um, the online version, no. Um, it's on the website now. It is on the website. Four hundred and sixty. About around about four hundred and sixty dollars. Yes. Where are we doing? We usually second do it week of July. Start the second the week of July. Yeah. Then add four weeks on from there. Yes. Nine. How long would each, how, yeah. Nine to one. Nine to one. Nine so you still get your afternoons to go down to the beach and have some fun. Yes. How long is the online uh, course? The online course will take place over the whole summer, and it's then how you um, gauge. Some people can do it more quickly and might do it in a shorter period of time. Some people might do it over a longer period of time. There's a lot more. There's more flexibility. You yes. Question. It's a bit like life and learning, but extended. There's a very specific requirement. We're running out of time now. Um, so you can, if you just do a, a Google search for BC Planning 10, you should be able to find the curriculum in more detail. The young lady at the back. Yes. Yeah, you should be there. Question? Um, it says it's provided by the North Van yes. District. Yes. Is the BLM okay to do all the BLM too? Yes, there will be an option in the form that says other, and it's up to the Um It's important that the school knows if you're using another provider, just so that it comes onto your transcripts. There is this vicious rumor out there that Planning 10 does not go on your transcripts. It, it does go on transcripts. You will see Planning 10 and your attainment. So please take it seriously and enjoy it, and there's lots of opportunities meaningful project in it and your attainment will be on your transcript. Yes. So can you teach us the summer program? Um, I don't know who's scheduled. It's on the website. It's on the website. I think it was Miss Reese who did it last year. Um, you can see if you search website it will show you. Yes. What is the online program called? Um, Planning Turn. Planning Turn. I will send you out the slideshow from today as well. And the link, if you click on options, it does take, I think it takes you to the link. Ms. Clark, is that correct? No, it takes them to a Google form where okay. they will indicate which of these options you will. <coughs> if any of you have, we've got Ms. Starkey at the back, who is the equivalent of uh, Ms. Park in the uh, parts in the middle school. So she's our, one of our um, assistants for the senior school. So if you have any questions about registering for Planning 10, she's the lady to go to. Yes? Which one do you suggest, the summer program or long program? Depends on what your commitments are. It's fun to do it and it's a lot more interactive and students have often said they get more out of it doing it with their friends in a summer school program because you have that discussion the interaction um, so it really makes it meaningful at the time. Some students who do the online course, it does, they don't get as much out of it. But it depends on your commitments and if you want to try learning through an online course. Okay, sorry guys, I am going to quickly go back. So you, I will send you out this PowerPoint but you are going to be signing up for your courses, well your parents are going to be signing up for your, cor um, your courses through the parent portal in PCR. And that's actually going to open tomorrow. We're doing an open door for your parents tonight from 6.30 to 7.30 where we'll go through the same information with them. But they, it'll be open from for before March break because during the holidays, the spring break, we will actually be starting to put the schedule and the timetable together. Um, one thing I didn't mention with the electives, um, are they ranking them? They are. So tonight we'll talk about it with your mom and dad as well, but when you go into the portal, you will see all of your grade 10 elective options, and you will rank them 1 through 5. We will try, very small. We will try our very best to get you the two top-ranked electives, However, the faster you put in your selection, the more priority you will have. Oh. Um, again, <coughs> there is one that is not on that list. It is by special permission, and it's called a yep. personal elective. 
We have mentioned that one. Yeah. So if you are thinking about personal elective, please come speak to one of us. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, are you allowed to like switch your elective? Yeah. Uh, midway, no. No, there will be a very, very short period of time at the beginning of grade 10 when you could do no. course changes, no <laughs> course, but it depends on the scheduling because we create the scheduling and the classes based on the selections that we can make work now. And it can be very, very difficult sometimes to change those. So the links, I know Mrs. Clark, I'm sure went through it, the links to each of those elective syllabus are in this presentation. Don't make a, a decision based on what your friends are doing. Really do look at that uh, link and see what the question is next. Yes. Um, if we are wanting to sign up for a personal how should we go about doing this? Okay, I would still fill this in in order of your ranking of these five in order, and then you need to either come and see um, Ms. Douglas or myself personally, or send us an email, and then we will arrange and we'll communicate with you. But fill this in as if you were taking two full electives. Yes. <laughs> Um, we will, as best as we can, guys, sorry, I'm very, very nearly finished. We will, as best as we can, and as Ms. Douglas said, get your two top ones. It doesn't always work because of class sizes, because of timetabling issues, but we do try our very, very best to get the top two electives that you want to do. Okay. I think, what time is it now? 55. 55. I apologize for taking some of your recess, but there's a lot of important A lot of important information. Our offices and our rooms are just the other side of here in the little um, hook. Miss Douglas is more visible than me because she has a glass fronted office. Mine's in the corner by the photocopier. But please pop down and see us. Send us emails if you have any questions. We're very happy to help you and help the transition into the senior school. Thank you.